to be generous and willing to share. The title of our message today is Show Me the Money! And the big idea that God commands us to be rich in good deeds. And the truth is, we don't need money to do good. But we could do more good with more money. I want to show you a picture. This picture is of your brother Jazion when I was almost four years old. Now, I'm here on the top step. So my story prior to coming to Jesus was a story and is a story of struggle. My family, prior to me going to foster care, right before I turned four, was of so much struggle and poverty. We lived in a kind of a mixed neighborhood, economically speaking. But it was pretty much on the low side. But the Poor people in our neighborhood looked down on us. True story. We did not have running water in our house. As a matter of fact, this is in in a town called Belmont, right outside of Charlotte. I was born in Charlotte. My grandmother lived in Belmont, and we had like 20 people living in this small house. No running water in this small house. As a matter of fact, to take a bath, we had to go outside with the bucket, fill the bucket up with water, but of course there's no handle on the on the water spigot. You got to take a pair of pliers and turn it on. Fill the bucket up with water. Go in the house, scoop water into a pot, boil the water, take the water that's in the bucket, pour it into the bath, boiling water, pour it into the bath, and take a warm bath. We was broke and Poor. Now, poverty is not really a matter of money. It's a matter of mindset. I don't think you heard me. Poverty, being broke, being poor, not having enough is far more a matter of what's happening between your ears than what's happening in your bank account. I simply want you to know that I'm not coming from a place of of looking down on anybody. But the fact is, all of us could do more good with more money. But the question is, will we think about money the right way? It was very interesting to me that in our passage today, we're going to be reading from what we now call 1 Timothy. And it is where an extremely important leader in the first church was about to be killed for his commitment to Jesus. He's in prison for the second time, this time far worse than the first time, and he knows Caesar is going to kill him because he will not stop putting people on to Jesus. 
Well, he's writing to a young pastor, probably about the age of your brother Jazion, Pastor Timothy. And in his letter to Pastor Timothy, Regina, he says, Pastor Timmy, I need you to make sure the people are on Jesus. And I also want to make sure that they're thinking about money the right way. He tells Pastor Timothy, chapter 6, don't waste time on people who tripping. Then he says, now people who are struggling financially, a.k.a. broke, this is what I want you to tell them. And then the people who are balling and got the bag, this is what I want you to tell them. We're going to start there. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. If you're with me, say amen. Somebody say, get the bag. Say, get that money. Get your money up. Watch this. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they'll lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. You ought to say amen. Now, interestingly to me, the Apostle Paul wants people, this, is, this man is going to be beheaded for his commitment to Jesus Christ. Did you hear what I just said? Will not stop the work of God even if it cost him his life. All he would have had to do is to say, Caesar is Lord and Jesus is under that. He said, I can't do it. Cannot do it. You're going to have to kill me. But I know that there's a crown of life and righteousness waiting for me. So you're going to have to kill your boy. But in the meantime, while I'm in this jail, I'm still mentoring people. I'm still helping people improve their life. I'm still investing in people that they might live as long as God blesses them to live and live abundantly. He says, Timothy, help the people get their money up. Now, what I want you to get out of this is very practical, powerful substance that are going to help you improve your life and to put in work for the Lord. I want you to see a couple things before we get to our principles. If you're with me, say yes. Number one, verse 17, he says, command those who are rich in this present world. That means the ballers, all the ballers. We got a couple ballers at Hope City, you know what I'm saying? Call no names, but couple people that when they crank up the car, it don't sound like it's a, it's a smoker. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> <coughs> okay. couple ballers. Well, says, he says, those who are rich, who are balling, who got the bag in this present world, tell them do not be arrogant. Do not get the big head. Do not think you better than nobody else. Come on, somebody. Do not be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth. Hope is that which says tomorrow can be better than today. He said, tell them, tell them that tomorrow can be better than today, but not because of your money. Look at what he says, verse 17, if you're with me, say amen, which is so uncertain. How many know that you can get a text message tomorrow just so you know? We're making some cuts, and your name came up. Just be ready. You might be on the other side of finding a position. He says, you better not be thinking tomorrow can be better than today because of money, because money is so uncertain. Look at what he does say. But to put their hope in God, who richly provides us. Now, family, I need you to hear me. He is saying, God has the power and the love to provide for you. 
But you got to put your hope in him. Are you with me? Now, what does that look like? Three principles that we're going to explore today. and We're going to get our money up. Number one, everybody say motivation. Number two, somebody say management. Number three, everybody say moves. Number one, motivation. There's a book that has changed my life, and the book is called The Magic of Thinking Big by Dr. David Schwartz. And in the book, he talks about how God, the creator, has infused in creation itself this reality that if you put your mind on a dream, a vision, a goal, and you mess around and find yourself feeling like, I must have that. Your mind will literally work for you. It will literally create pathways in your thinking to accomplish that which you are dreaming. Are you hearing me? Now, this is so dope because I have experienced this myself. And I won't, uh, I, I won't go far into this, but some of us... Some of you know my story where I didn't just get hit uh, with, with some extreme poverty as a little boy before I went to foster care. But I'm telling you, I've had to learn how to walk this thing as an adult. And this principle of thinking big really works. Motivation. One of the things that we've got to do is we've got to stay connected to the people and the things that stir positive energy in us, that keep us motivated and positive. Are you hearing me? Because if you get down, discouraged, beat down, and depressed inwardly, you lost hope, write the obituary. You've got to stay connected to the people and things will motivate you to be everything God has created and called you to be. Are you hearing me? This is the part of why I'm so grateful when God gave us the name Hope City Fellowship. Because hope says tomorrow can be better than today. Come on, I said hope says tomorrow can be better than today. And when you connect with God and you experience his hope on the inside, he'll mess around and you will experience divine motivation. Now, one of the things I want you to do under number one, motivation, if you're with me, say amen. So if you're going to get your money up, one of the things you have to do is you have got to motivate yourself by looking at the right things. One of the things you need to be looking at is a vision statement for your life. Are you hearing me? What I mean by that is I would encourage every person, and I have all of my fitness clients do this. I do fitness and growth coaching because you go to the gym and you're putting in work, but you're not doing anything outside of the gym. Your life's not going to change. So with our growth coaching, one of the things that I do is, hey, I need you to look at a statement that is your vision for your life. And I want you to look at it three times a day, once before you put your feet on the floor, look at this vision in a calm, relaxed state of mind. This is what happens, y'all. This is good. Watch this. Your mind will begin creating the person that you have to be in order to have that. Are you following me? The difference between what you want and where you're at now is action, but what you got to do to take action is you have to be moved and motivated to take the right action. Are you following me? This said, one of the things to motivate yourself is you need to have a concise, I'd say no more than three statements, vision for your life. It's on my phone. I look at it every single day, right before I wake up, or right when I wake up, before I put my feet on the ground, calm, relaxed state of mind. Boom, that's my vision. And I'm becoming the kind of person that's putting the action in to have that is working. Are you hearing me? Number two, throughout the day, and anytime you think about it, look at the vision. The scripture says, my people perish for a lack of vision. Oh, I'm preaching right now. Watch this. And then before you go to bed, 
And when you look at that vision, what happened? Calm, relaxed state of mind. Cheerful state of mind. God has built you in such a way that your mind will work for you like a good employee, not the kind that's late all the time. Somebody say amen. <laughs> now, something else that will serve you to motivate you is look at the people that you have got to serve. Look at them. Matter of fact, I'd say look at a picture. I just posted a picture of my princess a couple weeks ago. I was doing my time in the Word, and she came and jumped on my back. I'm like, baby girl, you know I'm, I'm praying. I'm, I'm with the Lord right now. Daddy, just give me a kiss. I said, let me get a picture of this. I'm gonna look, this is going to be one of my pictures that I just look at. This right here, when I'm tired, I don't feel like getting up because I went to bed way later than I should have. This is what I see in my mind. Guess what happened? Boop, it's time to go because i got to provide for that princess. Are you hearing me? Motivation. Are you hearing me? I said motivation. Are you hearing me? motivation. Now, I'm going to tell you a true story. Some years back, I did something no human being should do. I worked at UPS during the Christmas season. That is a sin. Nobody should do that, all right? <laughs> now, one of the reasons I did so was because one of my goddaughters, Jasmine, was walking through some extremely hard things in her life. I won't even put her business out there like this. But she and her family were going through such crazy hard things. I said, I got to get my money up. When I would get up working third shift at UPS, then working first shift for a friend of mine, working as a CFO, doing his books and his finances, right? Then doing painting, sleeping anytime I can, in the midst of my life having fallen apart. I'm talking what I know. This is who I saw. I said, she has got to get into a better place, and I've got to be the one to help. Are you hearing me? Somebody say motivation. You've got to have vision. Look at your vision statement. Look at the people that God has entrusted to your care. You guys ever heard of what a mama bear will do to you? You get too close, you don't even realize that the cub is in the neighborhood. Mama bear tear your butt up, right? In the same way, God has put that kind of power in you. When you see those persons that God entrusted to your care, it'll motivate you. Somebody say amen. Number two, if you're with me, say yes. Number two, everybody say management. The real challenge for us to improve our life and to get our money up is self-management. The truth is most of us make far more than enough money, but we don't manage ourselves well. Come on, I'm talking to somebody right now. One of the primary areas that we don't manage ourselves well enough financially is food. Food is the hole in most of our pockets. I'm preaching food, especially fast food. Because everybody got, everybody's got to eat, right? Well, what happens with most of us is we don't realize it, but we swipe, 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 swipe on that food. And next thing you know, you're broke and don't have much to show for all the hard work you're putting in. Are you hearing me? Now, with self-management, I want to encourage us with a very important principle that we've talked about, and that is that discipline in one area of your life always matriculates and flows over into every other part of your life. So if you and I will adopt disciplines in one area, it will help you to be a beast in other areas. Are you following me? Now, this is so dope. And I could give you many, many examples, but one that uh, some of us know has been a part of my life recently is I have learned to love cold showers. Now, this is what you want to do with a cold shower. Don't start from top to bottom in the cold shower. Get in the shower, do your thing, and then the last 30 seconds of your shower, turn it to cold. And then the following week, add another 30 seconds. And then the next week, add another 30 seconds. What happens? You begin seeing 
a person in the mirror who is disciplined, who can do hard things. Are you following me? Listen to me. When you are, let's say, in the cold shower or not, I'll give you another principle here. It's the power of enchantment. Now, what I mean is a lot of people love the power of affirmations. I can do it. I can do it. I'm a strong person. I have the wisdom and the resources I need in order to accomplish. Boom. God is a God of grace, and he will give me the power. That's good. Affirmations are good. What's more powerful is enchantments. That's where you take an affirmation and you put emotion to it. Are you hearing me? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Look at the difference. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Are you hearing me, people? You get in that cold shower? This scared my little girl so much the first time daddy started this. I'm in the cold shower. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can. She's like, Daddy, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? I'm just leveling up right now, baby girl. Are you hearing me? Now, my brothers and my sisters, we've got, we've got motivation. We've got management. Let's talk about the moves we need to take to get our money up. If you're with me, say yes. Yeah. Most of us want to make boss moves. Come on. Y'all be seeing Bruce Wayne walking around here. Y'all be seeing John McClung around here with these boss moves. You see him on social media posting another Jeep that he done bought. Man, you just bought a Jeep last week. This man making straight boss moves. But before you can make boss moves, you got to make big moves. And before you make big moves, you got to make basic moves. John McClung did not start off like that. You got to see some of our family members riding around in Porsches. Yeah, I'm not going to say no names. <laughs> One of our family members told me homegirl bought a Porsche on her phone. Coming back from vacation, said, you know what? I think I want a Porsche. Told baby boy, go online, find a Porsche, and tell me what you like. Bought a Porsche on the phone. Boss moves. Come on, are you with me? But I'm here to tell you, you don't make boss moves like that before you make big moves. And you don't make big moves before you make basic moves. Come on, I'm preaching. So you and I have to excel on a basic level before we can get to the next level. Are you hearing me? And God loves to entrust more to those who are faithful with little. Are you the person that's going to make the right moves behind the scenes when nobody is around? Are you hearing me? Will you be the disciplined person who says, I'm committed to joyfully getting my time with God when nobody's around? Pastor Jazz is not going to send me a text and say, hey, hey I heard you in your work. No, no, just between me and God, I'm making moves. And God loves to give you the increase if you do so behind the scenes. Somebody say boss moves. Now, this said, this is so good. Watch this. This said, here's some of the moves you need to make that will work for you to get your money up. It's so good, and I'm so excited to get to Jesus. This is going to bless y'all. But watch this. Number one, Paul said, command them to be rich in good deeds. He didn't say be rich with money, but come on, let's be real. We can do more good if we have more money. This is what you need to do. Number one, you need to look at your money. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. I've been here. This happens actually now. I just force myself to do it anyway, and it serves me. Look at your bank account regularly. Looking at your bank account will empower you to do what you need to do. Are you hearing me? See, when we don't look at our money, and we just kind of have that, that static noise in the background because we're just kind of disappointed and discouraged because we don't have enough, 
we have a way of just swiping and spending and just kind of being a passive recipient of hard life. But when you look at your money, listen to me, you've got to get this. God has put inside of you the power to be a beast. So when you look at your money, one, it will give you power to stop wasting money. You look at your money and say, I ain't got it like that. Sorry, I love you guys, but unless somebody got your boy, I can't go to lunch after church on Sunday. That's a good move. Are you hearing me? Hey, I would love to do so, but you know what? Baby boy, we can't slide through Subway or McDonald's because we ain't got it like that, but we can go to Ingles. Are you hearing me? Look at your money. Now, that said, look at your money, and you also need to look at your budget. Look at your bank account, and you need to look at your budget. Now, most of us don't have a budget. We just know, I need to pay the rent, the mortgage. I need to pay my utilities. I need to pay my this, my that. But you need to have an actual budget. We actually, at Hope City, we have a spreadsheet. We can literally send it to you in 30 seconds. 30 seconds, we have a budget spreadsheet that you can plug in every single bill that you have and the money that you have coming in, and it will do the math for you. So it will literally show you this is how much I have, this is how much my life costs, and at the bottom it will say the difference. What happens is this will empower you to handle yourself accordingly, and this is very good, this is very important. This will also empower you to dream big. This will empower you to say, you know what? I'm tired of struggling. You know what? I want more for my life in 2023. You know what? I want better for my life. I want to go to a restaurant and I don't have to look at the left side of the menu. I want to, the right side of the menu. I want to go to a restaurant and I get what I want to get. Because I've been at Benny's and Winnie's status. This is, as we close, a powerful principle. The boss move you need to make is you need to get around some bosses. You need to get around some ballers. Now, what do I mean by that? Rich in good deeds. Look at what the Apostle Paul says. If you're with me, say amen. Verse 17. Command those who are rich in this present world, not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, to be generous and willing to share. Now, let me ask you something. How in the world is God going to command somebody to be rich? <laughs> I command you to be rich. The same way that he commands us to love him. Now, watch this as we close. Have you ever thought about it? Jesus was asked, Rabbi, what's the greatest command? Out of everything up in that divine library, what's the greatest one? He says, you've heard it. When the Lord commanded you, love the Lord, God, with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. Now, how are you going to command somebody to love? Don't do that in a dating relationship, okay? You're going to love me. Do not command somebody to love you. But in this case, God can command it. I'm going to tell you why. Because in God's case, and in every case, love flows in response to that which is lovely. Hmm, this is good. I need you to get it. Love flows in response to that which is lovely. So, in the gospel, 
We are commanded to love God in response to he who has loved us. Matter of fact, the Apostle Paul said, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 as we close. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, Yet for your sake he became poor so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. See, when we get around Jesus and we get in the presence of Jesus and we get to thinking on and celebrating and enjoying the gospel of Jesus that God in the person of Jesus Christ laid down all the riches. Oh, you can do better than that. All the riches came to our broken, dark world and situation. Took on his own shoulders our pain and our sin so that he could pay our debt so that we don't have a debt to God any longer. For all who repent of their sin and put their trust in God, son, we have new and everlasting life that begins now. Now watch this. Jesus became poor, the king. Now, you've heard of John 3.16, but you might not have ever heard of 1 John 3.16. Look at what John says. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. This is rich in good deeds right here. Watch this. Not just so we can be a recipient, but so that we can give just like him. We ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. You might not have heard of 1 John 3.16, and you might not have ever heard of the wealthiest man to ever live. He was a black man. His name was Mansa Musa. Mansa Musa, the Mali empire 14th century he makes a trip to mecca he was a muslim he makes a trip to mecca that was so massive the records that we have that talk about his trip says that the people carrying goods and gold throughout the entire as far as the eye could see it was inconceivable how wealthy this man was on his way to mecca he stopped in the great city of Cairo, Egypt, and gave away so much gold for 10 years, it tanked the Egyptian economy through inflation. He was so rich, he gave away so much. Come on, somebody say, rich in good deeds. He gave away so much money, it tanked the economy through inflation for 10 years. Literally, because of that trip, year 1375, the atlas that came out that year, the world map, literally has Mansa Musa on the atlas. This is an actual copy of this. He's on the atlas of the world map in 1375 holding a gold nugget because as a rich man, he went and he shared his riches. That was Mansa Musa, Mansa meaning king in Mali. And I'm here to tell you that Jesus is the king of all kings who through transformation will put you on the map if you and I can look at ourselves and our bank account and those we love and our minds that will work for us and say, show me the money. Somebody clap your hands and give Jesus the praise. 